So in that case, so Tadessa, you haven't received. Is that the case? You may also type yes or no. So you haven't seen the week one challenge? Tadessa. Okay. No, but Tadessa raised your hand. Okay, great, awesome. Um, okay, so then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go, oh, just to share. I'm gonna share it and walk through it, okay? And you can raise your hand because I am unable to see the Google Meet. So you can unmute or Anastasia, you can, uh, give people when they raise their hand, you can interfere and let them ask. I want it to be interactive so you don't have to wait until the end. Okay. Okay. So the challenge is on user analytics in the telecommunication industry and the situation overview or the business need is clearly stated. It is about an investor who is interested in buying a uh, certain company or a telecom company and the investor requires a certain analysis, right? And then you are asked to do, to serve basically for this investor and uh, to do the analysis and deliver basically what is requested or what would help this investor make decision whether, you know, to invest on this company uh, or not um, and provide a certain expectation, right, for the kind of the return on investment. Okay, and it's a lot more, you will do a lot more analysis. Uh, they aren't much modeling at this point. It's much more of really uh, being able to query it. And I would really, really encourage people when you are doing pandas, not just only do a usual one, uh, but also write SQL query, because in pandas you can, you know, the data frame, you can actually say, you know, query, and that's much faster and that would improve your certain um improve, like your understanding of sql and sql is going to be asked a lot in every direction because data engineering a lot more involves being so good at querying efficient query okay so i would encourage even if that's not but it, there will be a bonus for that if people are much more using the query uh, as if this is like you know pandas is your kind of um your your database, okay? Okay, so the data is given there and the features are, are given also there. And just to give the kind of the features, so of course, this is a telecommunication data, it's quite messy data, um, but here are the tables, right? So the fields and the builder ID, this is what XDR uh, session identifier, you have to just go and search what XDR and telecommunication data. That's where sometimes everybody needs for a certain special analysis and insight, you need to be able to actually understand a little bit of the context or the field or the domain knowledge, a little bit, not much, but you should just be able to, you know, what are XDR session identifiers, whatever, so that it will help you a lot. Of course, the duration and the total duration of the XDR in milliseconds, the start, the end, you know, the MI, IMSU, this is the um, in mobile subscriber identity, IMAE, uh, international mobile equipment identity, and then the kind of the RTT, DL, UL, and BRT, DL. So a lot more about also the, the mobile, the handset manufacturer, handset type, and also the number of sec um, seconds with IP volume DL. So it's kind of you have basically a different social usage of a user of social media data, volume, you know, YouTube, Netflix, uh, Google email, um, gaming, and other volumes, right? So this is basically just the data. And I mean, so the description, the fields, and here is the data, okay? And absolutely, it's not that we just write, it, it always looks similar, but it's also, we really think about what is the learning outcome you expect. So don't skip it and in a way just it will really help you what what we expect if you do what what you would get it's basically in this 
uh, challenge when you do that, you would be able to understand and reason about business context much more than many other things. This is really analysis and it's about investment. And you must understand what, what it means, the decisions of like when you are presenting your work, you know, does that really make sense? Did you, what are like, what are the kind of gaps in your analysis you have to identify even because of time limitation? The investor gave you one week, but still, you know, you must, it, it's your role to be able to understand the business need in this case, and then identify the gaps, whether you actually, your analysis addresses some of that. So the limitation of the analysis, you really have to think about that. So this, this would be a very good exercise and really one of probably, I think of all the things we give you, this one is probably a lot more uh, probes your business context understanding um, and thinking about suitable analysis because you want to be creative in such a way that what do you want to achieve? You want to achieve all the time. What is even analysis? You know, analysis is that generalization. The only thing analysis is useful is because of mathematics, mathematics and statistics. Mathematics and statistics guarantees you that a certain relationship, it, if it's achieved, the probability that this thing is achieved by chance is so small that it's generalizable. As long as there aren't, of course, some mistakes you have done, you know, if uh, if you find out the probability of getting hit is, you know, um, ninety percent, then you are more likely to get ninety percent. Or at least if you try something hundred times, you should be able to get something between eighty-five and ninety-five. You know, most you know with a high confidence interval, right? So that's what it means. It's the guarantee that if the person takes your analysis and invests based on that, as long as your analysis is sound then they will make a profit statistically at least, maybe not on that investment, but if you do the same analysis, you know, 900 times, they should be able to win and, and, and make money. That's what it really means. So it just really probes that. And then understanding the data provided and extracting side. The data is slightly, as I said, you, some, for some of you, it's easy. You have worked probably in the telecommunication data before, but if not, it would provide you ability to understand the new data because you are a data analytics, data engineer, machine learning engineer, data scientist, uh, you know, Web3, you are required to be versatile in kind of understanding type of data quickly. You must have a strategy where to get the insight because without the data understanding, sometimes it's just really not easy. There are certain things you can do without understanding where the data comes from, but it is mostly, it's mostly important to understand the data type, whether it's, you know, categorical, whether it is, um, you know, rank, whether it is um, uh, an interval, whether or it's a float uh, thing, you know, so it's kind of the data type, as well as also the type of like, if it is, you know, categorical, how do you embed it? it does it show some kind of rankness, for example, hot, cold, whatever, or kind of some form of linearity, or is it just, you know, cat, dog, different species types classification? It, I mean, the data understanding will help you what kind of also inside, what kind of visualization and what kind of things you want to do what kind of algorithms makes suitable for this one also depends on the data so because the data is unique and kind of a bit complex this will also be improving uh, you know your your data understanding and then on top of that we ask you of course to build also a dashboard to explore data uh, and communicate it so this would really um, hopefully would address that you should be using Plotly, Seaborn, Matplotlib, or other things, including if you are familiar with React and stuff. I think for Web3, we really require a form. Also in, in Python, you can, you can, you get Browning, that you can, you are able to write, um, you know, the, the apps, which is called the decentralized apps using also Python. Uh, but I think it is important to be, to start familiarizing yourself also with JavaScript and kind of React environments such that it will get easier when you get in the future, right? So if you already know, great. If not, just start learning a little bit of that. Also, you can build some dashboards with that. And recently, Python also announced a very nice, it's called PyScript, and PyScript from Anaconda, that they basically, you are able to write directly, actually, in using HTML, in HTML, just like JavaScript, you can write using Python. And um, so that's a new niche area, but I would say, I think all I am saying is not that you can use Flask, you can use Streamlit, you can use any of them, but just also don't 
don't be limited if you know you can also explore or at least uh, ensure kind of mixed language use is useful just over time and then i think the most important part is that you you will think about also distributions samples biases fittings correlations because this thing is all about you know you have in a certain sample and you need to understand the sample size what kind of bias is there like you know is the data collected over certain whatever so all of that statistical understanding uh, will come here and then of course just we will really look into your advanced coding because that's a requirement uh, in any in any of the fields that you're specializing and the competencies that we are looking for are of course this this one we already know them we will provide a more breakdown in terms of how we grade each of them over time but for now it's just uh, you can see and key dates just in the key dates all the time you will see what are the the, the discussion the case it's today you know and many of the things will be all what week one will be where you, you will talk about all of the challenge whatever of this um challenge and then the entering solution is at 20 utc on wednesday um, and then the final submission will be on saturday on 14 may okay and as I was saying earlier, the leaderboard of the week really gives you a very, I would say, um, an important, so I'm just going to put it like that. So this, the, it's how we evaluate each of them, right? So uh, I'm just going to, so each of the first one is the community growth and peer support. We really look, it's not because we want you to be just only community because this thing we, we identify to be one of the key driver, someone who's active in community and supporting, usually also they are performing good at, at jobs. So, you know, it's not, not nothing got to do, oh, we want just community because it's for the community itself, but it also helps because we understand that it has value in terms of job readiness. So, um, because team working and being in the team, you know, most people could get fired just however good they are because they are not a good team player or they don't understand their team dynamics and they are not supporting others. Uh, and they're basically, you know, they don't contribute to the business. And some companies might prefer someone good in community, but actually okay, you know, not as excellent in, in the technical sometimes because the glue factor is important. Like instead of you working as a loan, if you bring a lot more people and make them work on one thing, you might, you know, you might, your value, the money to value will be much higher in that sense. So community is an important part. Therefore we give it, uh, you know, an important uh, value as well in, in our kind of the leaderboard. And then there is also, of course, like your communication of your technical topics and career topics uh, is important. So we have the, Actually, sorry, this must be 15. Um, oh, sorry. And that is wrong, oh, sorry. So, but these are the, the, the points here. What that really means is that the five points on the entry, that this is what we are just saying. So you, if nothing, you know, this is, you can follow this and it's fine. So that means we want evidence of your clear understanding of the business context of the data. What really means on that is that uh, the business context, you, you know, you rephrased it in your own term, what you are doing, what you are looking for, and you know, what you are planning to do, right? So that's a clear understanding. It is not just copy and paste of this, but rephrasing you, you, it and kind of elucidating. And also the data, you probably say like the data is collected uh, from this and the data has this number of rows and the data has this number of features and the data requires some of these are like, you know, categorical. It's basically what you get sometimes in, in DF info, you know, once you load it into the, uh, pandas, that is sufficient already, right? So describe is even better. Like you describe the, the data with, with pandas and a little bit of description of that would qualify that. It basically means that in your report, we want to see a section, a letter of how much you under, you know, the business context. So you rephrase the goal and what you, what needs to be done and then the data, right? And then the other one is because this is also entry that you probably had clearly planned how you tackle the project. So basically what you have done, you know, uh, what you plan 
your planning as well as also what you have done so far. And then the other one is just the style of the report that basically means, you know, we want to see that you are not just, uh, you know, not caring about anything, but anything that comes out of you, your default quality is high. Right? It's basically like if I tell you like, okay, give me quickly, like now in the next 10 minutes, give me a writing of one page. Um, where do you start? So you need to select quickly a certain style. You need to you need to just be sensitive to uh, a few of like like I don't know line mismatches and stuff. So these things, it's just basically it's called your default state. We want to improve your default state. That means everything that comes out of you is good quality because that's necessary. Right? You know if you are you know if you are in your reports if you are messy you don't see styles you don't see kind of structures whatever it's not good. So. But that is for the interim, as you could see, uh, the report is slightly lower points comparative to the final. But this is just important because we will take into account whatever you do here. It's also there in the final. That's why if you do well there, you really and will give you uh, hopefully a quick feedback there. But it will just basically allow you the final. So in the final, you would basically, as you say, style and quality of the report becomes you know, a lot more, you know, that we we also will be able to see if you're making a lot of grammar mistakes, not grammar per se, but really at least that is it understandable? You know, the fonts that you use is consistent, the format. So we def definitely, no one excuses you for not producing a quality report. It's just a default that you, you have to improve over time. And then the articulation, did you really use, you know, a good, uh, clear language and, and uh, you know, kind of, uh, very effective sentences to describe your work, the clarity of the content and the objective communication. In the objective communication, I attach it here because objective communication is really, it's evidence-based uh, inferences uh, and all that. And here you will see a number of kind of different way of different types of reports, but in the objective communication, this is, this one is called analysis report. So if you want to search what is, you know, how to do a good, a report on analysis report, then you will be able to see. So, you, you know, and this is much more of like being able to really, if you don't have a good evidence, you don't say like, oh, I found that, right? You just say like, okay, the data shows this kind of thing, the data has this type of relation, but this type of relation may not guarantee that. So you're basically much more of objective. You are much more not sensational report, but it's much more of an objective uh, report. And then of course, in that element, you know, clear object, clear sections on the objective of the project and int intended business value that's also in the entry, data size, type, format, and other details that's also in the um, uh, entry methods and algorithms that are used. For example, just to use uh, visualization techniques, you know, what kind of visualization, histograms uh, and stuff like, did you bring it, did you group by, you know, what kind of things that you used, uh, did you, for missing values treatment, what have you used, you know, like that, anything just that is going to be used, you have to describe a certain way of like, all what we need is that to show, to understand, to get an evidence, you are actually thinking, you're not just copying and pasting something and, and kind of hoping it to make, but you're actually thinking about it. Even if you copy and paste, you're actually thinking about the, what you are doing. You know, it's an active process, not a passive process. So even if it's not, you know, a lot, but at least you are able to um, understand your actions or to which direction you want to go. So that will give us details on pipeline automation. So basically, whenever we talk of like, you know, uh, DevOps and MLOps, the difference between, you know, software developers versus AI, ML, Web3 engineers is that we don't only look, so developers only look at code. You know, they have only one thing to version, one thing to write, one thing to do everything. It's called code. For us, no, it's actually the three are equivalent. There is code, there is data, and there is model. And each of them needs to be versioned. Each of them needs a structure. Each of them needs a pipeline. Each of them, they need CICD in their own. So it's basically an email of person needs really, you know, code is just one component, uh, equivalently and in the same uh, uh, kind of in the same way and sometimes even more data and model basically becomes another component to to deal with so that's why it's it's very different uh, between but the, the practice the software development practice can come here as well so and we want to see that kind of that you are approaching it 
you know, in, in a pipeline driven sense. That means, okay, you have cleaned some data and you write actually that you're chaining, your, your code is chained. So Scikit has this pipeline. So you're basically maybe just, you know, giving it that way. You're using Scikit uh, algorithm, for example, for pipeline. Uh, so that's that's also good or any other form of like chaining your method so from reading extracting your data reading your data to kind of like you know filling the missing value checking the quality of the data and then uh, as well as also extracting some features feature engineering and and, and feature um kind of whatever uh, merging and then on on top of that also you have a certain other way assessment of the quality and kind of looking at independences between features and kind of information content and then maybe also is kind of the visualization aspect so all of this can be independently written but in a pipeline sense you can skip for example so sometimes you may want to say like to see okay i'm going to replace the let's say the missing value treatment by a different algorithm how does my result change now you don't have to write a new everything it's changed it's basically is everything independent then you basically only change now you write a new algorithm and you give it to the pipeline okay now use this pipeline instead and use this missing value treatment the code than that one and still everything is the same so it's kind of that's called pipeline and automation really means then you will be able to do if this thing is continuously coming you'll be able to arrange it so over time we will see airflow cron um, and many other kind of will be used and we'll, we'll see over time. And then well-produced or supported figures and graphics, of course, you have to basically choose which dimensions to visualize and whether the, 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 you know, the, the figures are representative, you know, are they the kind of, they, would they give, provide enough information, enough insight. And then of course, on the resultant discussion, after all this, you have to also, of course, what have you got? You have to overlook and summarize. What have you got? What is your understanding, right? So you basically need to summarize this. And what does that mean, what you got? Is the implication, with you related to the business value. The business value was, you know, to help the investor understand whether it's profitable or not. So have you managed to gauge and put together a certain kind of recommendation? That's basically it. And then of course, you know, balance between being full of information and easy to understand is another thing. But anyways, so, and then there is 20 points for dashboard, um, the code, the screenshot, and the cloud deployment. Uh, and 10 point is on basically just the functionality. Uh, and also when you tell us about your, your dashboard, some, some people just didn't show the functionality. They just only gave one screenshot that you need to provide also. You need to show us that if, if you are just using, if you are not deploying it, if you are actually giving a screenshot, you should get, you know, it's your work. You must show it in its full glory. So that means you have to take multiple screenshots so that we can see, or you have to put it live access, right? So we give you both ways to at least see. And then the proof of wireframe design. You know, in, in a company, you don't work like when you design a dashboard, you don't design. Somebody else, which is called the design team or the product team actually designs, kind of puts a wireframe using Figma or another tools like Sketch, whatever, to be able to actually help you. So it's in a, you know, what industry does it, it separates tasks into making it easy for you. So like one person designs, becomes an architect, the other person becomes a civil engineer, the other person becomes a bricklayer, you know, person, and the other person becomes like a carrier, just putting um, objects from here to there. And if one person were to do all design, you know, build, whatever, it would be just cumbersome, it doesn't work. So there is a separation of roles in, in industry. And this is much more of to allow you to appreciate that. So first, maybe plan how your, your, your dashboard will look like. That's called a wireframe, okay? So um, that's basically it. Like you'll be able to, to just give you that kind of, at least you, have you planned your dashboard before you build it? And then also anything in the CICD, that means did you put a test, you know, so that you know, um, like GitHub actions and test coupled so that to test if you improve, if you add new features in your dashboard, for example, you know, do you test so the continuous integration as well as also does it also deploy automatically? I, we know that you, you don't, you, you probably you don't have the cloud infrastructure to do all that, but the attempt of that, it will show us that you have put a test, you put a GitHub actions and you have also 
like if you are deploying it in Heroku or in others, I think there are a couple, I would suggest over time, is that in a free development environment that you actually have also the CD component, which is the continuous deployment. So that means when the tests pass, then it will also trigger uh, the deployment uh, element. And then the dashboard code and, and whatever. So does your code have, you know, is it based on Docker, Docker file? You have you Dockerized it, you know, so that you are able to push. And then again, as I said, just separate on the GitHub actions and unit test and the quality and structure of the code, you know, like even if it's streamed it, whatever, you know, have you tried to separate? Some people I have seen in week zero did really excellent job in, in separating it all of these components so that the, the dashboard can grow in, in complexity and quality over time. And then also have you used kind of incorporated some kind of JavaScript to add certain features um, to your to enhance your dashboard and have you used like you know a square schema such that you know you have once you do the feature engineering, the missing whatever, have you just put it into a database such that then the dashboard always is relying on to the from this feature store. Okay. And then the data analysis and coding has the interim submission. Again, as I said, a lot more carry uh, weight is just about uh, processing in EDA and generating novel plots, insights for quality plots, and then the modularity and use of scikit pipeline and or as a pipeline approach is also there. In the final, again, as you can see, a lot more the weight is on the depths of your pre-processing and EDA. And then another one is on the pipeline drive and driven analysis and the plots in the notebooks. So whenever you have notebooks, are they, you know, have you incorporated insightful plots in your notebook? Have you commented it well so that other people can follow and understand, uh, for example. And then of course, some other GitHub uses modularity and quality of code and GitHub actions and unit tests also of your code. And the badge, so here is where we start. So every week we will award one badge, which carries, I think, five points or no, plus 20 points for the owner of that badge. So somebody who has done a great visualization would receive a badge. That means plus 20 points in their overall grade. And then the quality of code, if someone really produced a high maintainable, efficient, you know, efficient uh, code um, is well comment. Uh, they will also award the best one will award, will get the quality of code um, badge. And then the other one is innovative approach to analysis, you know, have they done even if it doesn't work, did they really approach it in a certain? So we also reward innovative approach to analysis, one um, one badge, and then also the quality and presentation and creativity of the writing and the presentation, or basically means the report. We also award for that, and then one badge is for most supportive in the community. So somebody, you know, everyone who the owner of one of this badge will be will receive a plus twenty points. So let's imagine if a one person really won everything that means like uh, you know it's almost impossible we have never seen that but if one person really does you know the best visualization the best quality of code the best innovative approach the best writing and the best supportive in community that basically means they get 100 um points extra you know so that's what it means but most you most of the time it's going to be you know maybe there will be one person who might have two points two bytes but most of the time it's one. Um, so that is it. And the group work policy, this time there's no group work. So in some of the, um, I think week four will be the first one, if I'm not mistaken, or, or, or if we'll see, uh, even maybe the week two is actually group work. Like, so that means we will assign groups, but this time there's no group. So everyone does their thing. But of course, in a community, you discuss and solve your problems and stuff, uh, but uh, you have to submit your work and it's just an individual work. The late policy is also described here in a much more clear detail, so read it. So instructions. Basically, at the end of this week, you are expected to have a complete project that has a reusable code. That means we really are expecting advanced code. So that means you have to write in, in, in functions and classes, and even in classes, like if you, if you want properties, you know, some kind of like, uh, you know, use all the great things from Python to make your code really uh, modular, nice, efficient. So whatever in that terminology, so that's at least functions and classes are required and coding uh, connected using scikit pipeline. So that basically the scikit pipeline, you have to understand what is scikit pipeline and just basically I will, you will just basically, you can connect different uh, parts of the analysis within a pipeline. So that means you write different classes and you connect them 
and so that you apply one after the other and the output of one becomes the input of another like that. So that's basically just state. And then dashboard that shows your finding and SQL database as feature store, which can be used to store selected features uh, for dashboard and visualization. And then your project folder should mirror as close as possible example here. But I mean, I think this was, this, this is much more of, I would say a lot more of, um, uh, not, it's, it's not setup pie is kind of, if you make it installable using, right. But also we haven't added here Docker and stuff, but this is much more of a guideline. See it as much more of like, there is a clear folders, you know, tests, scripts, notebooks, models, data, and that. And then as well as also there is definitely a readme, you know, and there is a requirements that somebody needs to install your code instead of Travis, of course, we don't, you know, you can use Travis, but we, we really are switching to GitHub uh, workflow. So that's better. Um, and then there's Docker and other components. So we'll probably give also some of the best uh, that we have seen from the past that people can get inspired by. Uh, but this is just at least a minimum that at least there should be a requirements. That means somebody needs to create environment from your file and work and, you know, reproduce so them. That must be in mind. That's what it means. Okay. And code is installable via PIP, uh, has unit tests and with good test coverage, CI CD setup, Docker file to build it as a Docker image. Um, so this would just be a good practice always to have and just get used to it. And the global objective of the, you know, the analysis is broken, broken into four elements. The first one is called user overview and analysis. You basically, who are your users? Basically, that's what you're trying to answer. Again, it's all explained here. And the other one is that the user engagement analysis. So now it was about the users, who they are, but now how are they engaging? So it's like you break and to get into see how the engagement works, like, you know, where are they engaging? You know, are they such, you know, kind of thing. And the other one is that there are probably surveys in the data, like, is there experience? Experience means like, do they have like, I don't know, shortages? Do they use, like, for example, in the engagement, do they engage in bonuses? You know, if you give them, if you have like something buy this to, to get discount of that, do they get engaged with that kind of thing? You know, that's one experience is that do they have, you know, connection issues and all that. So you, you again get, uh, and then also the satisfaction, are they satisfied? Do they use more? So again, here is described. So the lifeblood of any business is the customer business are always, so it's always better to explore each data using multiple exploratory techniques. So for the actual telecom data set, you are expected to conduct a full user overview analysis in the following sub uh, tasks that you are guidance. Start by identifying the top 10 handsets used by the customers. You know, identify the top three handset manufacturers, identify the top five handsets per top three handset manufacturers, and make a short interpretation and recommendation to market, uh, to marketing teams. So this is basically the user analysis, what they have you know, what do they use uh, kind of thing, you know, in which, with which models, whatever are coming to use your, your offer. Right. And then, um, so our core detail record is the voice channel and XDR is the data channel equivalent. So they're, um, here consider XDR as data session. Uh, detail record in XDR user behavior can be tracked through the following application, social media, Google, whatever, whatever. Okay. And then in task 1.1, you, you, you basically, we give you very detailed what to do. So here, I'm not going to go through, but you read it. And if there is, we will discuss, but it's basically to do that, we'll ask you because that, you know, the data is slightly different. So we give you a bit more detail on what to do um, to achieve the first uh, task. And the second task is user engagement analysis. In this one, you basically, in the current data, you are expected to track the user's engagement using the following engagement metrics. So the session frequency, how are they engaged um, in, with you, like with the kind of service that they are, the duration of the session, the session total traffic, download and upload bytes, you know? And again, we give you uh, what to do in that. So it's kind of like a bit a starting point and a strategy. And then the experience analytics, so that's basically the aggregated. Uh, so in this section, you are expected to focus on network parameters like TCP retransmission, round trip time, and throughput, and the customer's device characteristics like the handset type to conduct a deep user uh, experience, the network parameters, and all that. So this is basically just 
you'd be able to compute the average TCP retransmission, average RTT and handset type, and average throughput. So again, here, you know, I'm just running um, so that you, you, when you read it, it gets much more clearer. And when you also look at the data, it's much more clearer with that. And then the final one is the satisfaction analysis. The satisfaction analysis, basically, again, based on engagement analysis, the experience that you conduct above um, has write a Python program to engagement scores to each user. Consider the engagement score as a Euclidean distance between the user data point and the less engaged cluster. So it's basically you do some kind of k-means clustering to identify who are engaged and who are not engaged. Some kind of you, know, you identify some of the clusters and what does it mean? You know, highly engaged ones you can imagine to be highly satisfied and the less engaged ones to be uh, less satisfied. So in another one, so again, you know, consider the average both engagement and experience score as a satisfaction score and report on the top 10 satisfied customers. So, you know, there is no survey here to help you whether a user is satisfied or not, but based on, you know, if they engage more, it means they're highly satisfied. If they don't engage more, then you find out what are the factors that are different from the engaged ones versus the non-engaged ones, such that is this some kind of, you know, uh, is this a service? Is this, you know, some, some other uh, features? So basically you're trying to find some property of engaged and not engaged because the non-engaged ones probably are the, the less satisfied. Of course, it could just be like they haven't, you know, they didn't engage because they, they are using something else. But again, if they really are engaged, usually it means they are satisfied. So you're trying to find out the, those differences. What you know, what characteristics are there in the engaged and the not engaged? So based on clustering, you you will be able to score. Okay, okay. So with that, then we get into the uh, tutorial schedule. So Monday it is um, introduction to week challenge. We just are done with that, and then data extraction, uh, cleaning, transformation, and formatting. These are mo modular Python that will be in the afternoon, and then Tuesday. It's the exploratory data analysis and insight communication. And Wednesday is modeling and dashboard development. So there will be three, all of them in the afternoon. Um, so you know, it's actually in the morning, it seems. So maybe that is the case. So is that how you scheduled it, uh, Anastasia? You guys scheduled it? It will be the morning. Yeah. Yes, same time, like today. Only the today's yes. tutorial will be in the afternoon. Okay. So, and deliverables, this is again, uh, it's just to, to show, you know, what, what to, uh, to, so there might be, I mean, there might be, so what is really in the leaderboard computation refer that. So this is, there may be like a certain, whatever is missing here is detailed there. But that one is kind of how we will see and how we will grade. You know, that's the rubrics. This one is just basically what you need to submit, right? Sometimes there is there may be a gap. If you if that is the case, still consider both. Both are we take the other one, the leaderboard. What I showed you in the leaderboard is really used as a metric to come to kind of grade your your submission. And this one is basically to make it clear what needs to be submitted. Okay, so there is a report submission that in the entry and also a link to your GitHub. And then on the final submission, again, um, a report and basically a GitHub link to your data analysis. And um, so maybe we haven't listed the dashboard part. I will also, I think here is it, the dashboard part, so it's fine. And here are the references. We try to give us more coverage to the references so you can start. Actually, we really uh, go and understand the references. So. I would say start from checking out these references because we also think they have, um, it's a good starting place in, before you explore your own stuff. Maybe just check them out so that they may really answer most of your questions already. Okay, so that is it. And um, let's just now open to discussion. Okay, good morning. Morning. Uh, how are you? Welcome all. Uh, 
I think this way of presentation is very important in getting us to understand the things that we're going to do. And I am very proud of you or for the nice presentation you made. And uh, as a question, what I have is just, uh, is uh, do we create uh, our own uh, GitHub code or uh, shall we fork as before? Do you uh, give us a link or we will going to create our own code? Just yeah, all this the time, format that you show. Yes. Yeah. So this time you are creating your own repository. Yeah. So from scratch. So name it something identifiable, but when you submit on Wednesday, you will okay. submit that. So there is no starting code. There are start starting um, uh, notebooks that is kind of part of the tutorial that might really help, but yeah, that's it. Okay, okay thank you. And uh, I'm happy if the other tutors also guide us on the Slack on doing each uh, task. Uh, uh, most of the time, uh, what confused us, what confused us is just the things that we will going to submit and the, yeah. uh, the ideas that we will going to present yeah, for the session. So yeah, so so as I important. say, I think okay, it is probably good, but the the let's say the truth is on the challenge document. So if no. it's not there, force us to put it there. So this is just the only there should be all the required information for what to do, what to submit and how the submission will be graded yeah. should be in the document. So yes, other discussions are important to elucidate, you know, because we, we can't put everything there, but I would say them, all the information, as I showed you now, we really work to make it so clear as yeah. much as possible, what needs to be submitted when, and of course the Google Classroom gonna reproduce the same thing. It's so basically then show you submit, here a report it will really be clearly saying that submit oh. here oh. like the link submit oh. here um, a screenshot submit here like this so it's going to be super clear in the google classroom as well as there so in principle almost everything should be you know if you are confused that information is surely in the challenge document so go and read it either it could be in the leaderboard section we might give it or in the uh, in the tasks what needs to be done so I think, but again, ask it, absolutely. It, does, it means more information, more engagement helps. So people, you know, we will help to try to also explain it in the, in the Slack, absolutely. But I would say, start from the challenge document. Okay, thank you, thank you. No. Okay, great. And Biniam, uh, no, Martin, and then Biniam. Okay, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for the class. Uh, I wanted to ask about uh, the SQL that uh, is being used. Is it a must uh, somebody to use the MySQL or you can use an alternative? I think anything, Postgres, MySQL, uh, MongoDB, yeah. whatever you want. We just want to be able you to understand it's called the SQL framework because I can tell you why. Any of the data engineering tools, whether it's Snowflake, whether it's Databricks, whether it is uh, Redshift, whether it's Athena, or any other, there are, it's called the Hive, including all of the things that we are going to focus in the future, which is Hive tables and all that, they are based SQL, SQL based. So the language is SQL. So you'll be able to, and they are like at a terabyte and petabyte of data, you are not going to be able to use pandas. You're going to use, you know, Spark and all that. And that requires some form of understanding of SQL, you know, being so familiar with SQL. So we don't force at all, which MySQL, whatever, just because it's just the simplest. But I would say you can use Postgres, you can use whichever, but be familiar and write things in a SQL um, language. So the whole thing that I said today, like for this week's challenge can be written in SQL. So I'm gonna also share some kind of brain teasers uh, for SQL, but it's really SQL is 
you know, pandas is really, that's why you can do everything that you do in pandas, do fine, all of that using just pandas dot, you know, data frame dot uh, query and then some kind of query. Um, so it's kind of some kind of a square. So yeah, I hope that makes it clear. Yeah, thank you. Then I also uh, wanted to ask about uh, the pipelines. So with uh, the pipelines, are we going to like, uh, is it, it, it's, it's, is it, are we going to be doing it progressively or uh, the way it is, it's, it should be done uh, like a sequence? A whole? I think it is most of the time it's a sequence. Pipeline is like, you know, you load the data. So you can write a class that loads the data, right? That just loads and prepares it in a certain way, you know, just maybe that that class has certain methods that when it's called it will answer it will kind of give some things maybe it splits it into uh, this and that so in that data loading you might have a splitting you might have a certain thing and then you might have like a, the form of missing values so you may have a class that means that does the first can you mute can you mute yeah. um so in that <clears throat> missing value treatment <clears throat> class, it could be that it has one method that basically removes the, the rows with missing value. The other one fills it with a mean, the other one maybe with median or some other thing. Now in the pipeline sense, when you change like, okay, when you want to experiment, you might go, the okay, data load is the same, but the missing value one use a different method called you know, uh, drop missing values. And then after that, so it's basically, it's sequential, you can change arbitrarily based on the possibilities in each of what you have in each of the case. Maybe you replace, you may have two classes for missing values. One is good, one is dropping the uh, ones, the other one is, I don't know, modeling using random forest to fill uh, random value, you know, missing values. And then now in the pipeline, you might say like, okay, your first pipeline could be load data, use the missing value using, you know, by dropping. And the other one is another class called, you know, uh, do random miss value, you know, fill values based on random forest modeling. So pipelines are basically, you can branch them. You can, comp you know, you can do some kind of pathways easily, change things, that's what it means. So it's a sequential usually, but of course, if you run them, if two things are independent, so for example, uh, if you want to do four types of missing value, you can do them in parallel, right? So that, that is the same. And also if you want to do some kind of, let's say, uh, fine tuning uh, for your model, that can be done in parallel. So, so some things are sequential, some things are parallel in the pipeline. But here, what we are talking is about how you put structure into your data analysis, how you chain things. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Binium. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Yes. Okay, I have a few questions. Uh, uh, one of my questions is somewhat similar to <clears throat> what you just explained. Uh, it's about pipelines. Uh, I have some ideas about pipelines, but I'm not entirely sure uh, how they are reflected or shown. Uh, my understanding is that uh, pipelines are the steps uh, go through. Uh, the steps are code, data, and the models uh, transition through. Uh, but exactly how do we show that? Uh, are they reflected in our commits, uh, or are we supposed to write them in? Uh, there, is there is pipeline. There is like in pipeline. pipeline. Okay. So it's called pipeline. It's called pipeline. Like it pipeline, I just get you just okay. So there's a, an echo, so I'm, I'm gonna stop the yeah. So it is psyche, it has like at least a starting place, you know, psyche, it has uh, a pipeline, and but everything called Spark, you know, uh, Cy, like kind of many of the things, TensorFlow, um, you know, Keras is just basically this when you do dense layer, you know, add layer, blah, blah, blah. All of that is called pipeline. 
you are basically adding in a pipeline and then you, you compute them sometimes in parallel or sometimes in, in so it is not it is not about how you do it's about actually you write codes and you put them in a pipeline that a pipeline manager that basically does then based on what it's told it will run your code your whole entire thing so it is as i we have a reference in the challenge document maybe not i'm not sure but you can check scikit pipeline and then you can learn about it okay so uh, the packaging extraction modeling and all the other uh, tasks uh, will be part of the pipeline or? yeah 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 okay. we try to fit as much as, as much as go on uh, because uh, your your mic your mic is somehow as an echo so it's basically yeah uh, you try to fit as much of it is in, in in the pipeline sometimes you might not fit it's okay but what i think it just what we want to see is that you you are able to think in in a form of like this way pipeline and pipeline is just a design you know it's basically an architecture it's like in a in any industry you try to just go okay get resource you know after the resource maybe register the resource after registering the resource you know distribute the resource and like that you know all of this is just the whole people assigned it's called sales marketing sales and then from that hr and then from that in the department all of that is if you think of it if it was a code that's basically each of them are elements in the pipeline so that the whole thing works so in a way some things of course are you know they may not fit in the pipeline maybe just you are exploring something you don't fit it in the pipeline but i think it's just you would see you know think of pipeline as really a technical term instead of as the english word okay thank you <clears throat> uh, my other question is will we be working on a cloud platform like aws uh, or something similar uh, or are we doing it uh, the usual way around on our computers if you mute yes you, this time we are not providing cloud you're doing it in your computer so yeah it's the same as week zero you will be doing it in your computer for some that we think it is almost impossible to do it in your laptop then we provide uh, if for example if it requires gpu whatever we we provide cloud but at the moment this this is this task is on um, you will do it on your computer okay one uh, last question yeah uh, it's about yeah. the data <clears throat> last year, uh, the data in json format and uh, we converted it into a csv and then finally we imp imported it into a mysql database so this time are we expected to do the same uh, process uh, or uh, are we directly going to uh, insert or import the data into a mysql database and work from there yeah no the format is just a csv so you can definitely load it you know in an efficient way in inside um data frame like uh, pandas so it's okay csv but then of course when you do it once you it's called transformation you know you cleaned you kind of feature engine or whatever that feature you should put it in in sql for further visualization or for further dashboard uh, connection so the the data is not you know it's a structured data now while the twitter was in semi-structured so you actually needed to do some extraction first here you don't need to Thank it's a CSV. Great. Okay, yeah. Im Im yeah. Improve, improve your mic. I think your mic is today wasn't good, and it has a lot of. I will. Yeah. <clears throat> Others, let's get. I mean, I'm. <clears throat> so, Salam, is everything clear? Yeah, I called you even before. That's great. Go on. okay can you hear me yes we do uh, my question is uh, uh, what are we going to do uh, on wednesday it's uh, tasks uh, 
to submit also GitHub link how many of the tasks uh, should we finish uh, on, our, on our GitHub. I, I think it's, it's kind of like roughly you know what it means you have until Saturday and you have four tasks. I mean, it's clear what needs to be submitted on the entry because it's specified there. So it says, you know, your employer wants a quick meeting after you have done a first quick pass of the data. Uh, so to achieve this, summarize your findings from task one in seven slides, right? Um, this is just an entry submission, number of XDR sessions, session duration, the total download, the upload, the total data volume, blah, blah. So slide one, two, three, non graphical univariate, four, six, graphical univariate, and seven. I mean, you might not, basically, whatever you manage to do. I mean, this one is real, real. I wouldn't be, you can, the minimum is that. But if you're done more, that's fine. But at least task one should be finished. Because let's imagine the, you have four, five days, right, overall. And then in the five days, you have four analysis to do. Some analysis are, of course, dependent on other. The first and the second are probably a lot. So I would say until Wednesday, if you haven't finished the task one, it would be very difficult for you to finish everything then on Saturday. So this is kind of like, I would say you should finish task one, but then if because of the experience you get in task one, then task two and I mean, the other analysis should be very quick on, on then Thursday then because then you have an understanding, then you know, you will be faster. And then on Friday, the dash, you will have time to build the dashboard and uh, whatever. And then on Saturday, you will have again to do the reporting. So I would say just finishing the task one will make you better ready for completing everything by Saturday. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm also asking, um Rehmat. sorry if i'm Rehm? Okay, if not, um, so I'm going to call another name. Daniet? Danite? Everything clear? You can't really just say hi. Is everything clear? Yes, Are you okay with everything? Okay, wonderful. Um, so, do we have any other question? If not, we can close it because it's over time. So, I will give 30 seconds for if there's any hand rising, otherwise. Okay. Thanks, Ernest. Wonderful. Then, great. See you and uh, happy mining happy exploration and we will just exactly continue discussion over slack so um, abdullahi you can stop the recording